This video is on ratios, proportions, and rates. So we got uh, three questions here. Uh, these can be a little tricky if you don't know how to solve them. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. So we got the first one already set up, right? Where we have A to B is five to two, B to C is three to one, uh, D to C is four to one, and they ask you what is A to D. So let's see, we're gonna need the pen for this one. Okay, so when you have um, like these ratios right here, okay, so if it said A to B, B to C, and then C to D, then we could just make these fractions and just multiply them together, okay? But because of the third one says D to C is four to one, all we need to do is flip it so that if you flip it, then you can say C to D equals, and then you just flip this part too, right? One to four right when one to four and one fourth is the same okay and then we can multiply them together so let's keep using the draw pen here for this video um so we have five halves times three over one we see that for b to c right and then now we have one fourth that we just figured out for c to d right and then we can multiply these together that's all we gotta do so five times three is fifteen times 1 is 15, and 2 times 1 is 2, times 4 is 8, and that's our answer right there, 15 eighths. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, as long as you have them in order, you can just multiply them together as fractions. If there's anything in the order that's off, which is what you're probably going to see on a question, is then you just flip them exactly the way that we did. Okay. And this next one is one of the harder harder math questions. And go back to text mode, get rid of this. Give me one second to write this out for you. Um, okay, so on this question, I'll read it first. So we have A, B, C, D, and E are integers, and then they have a uh, the following ratios. So we'll write out these ratios. A to B equals two to five. B to C is three to five. C to D one to four and d to e four to one okay and then the question is what is the smallest possible value of a plus b plus c plus d plus e okay so a lot of people get this wrong on this test um but it doesn't have to be so impossible right and so as we start off so we're just going to what's the smallest value of these numbers that fit in to these ratios and so when you first think about that it might be like man i have no idea but so let's just start right you start off with a equals two and b equals five let's say okay so that's right here let me get my pen back again okay all right, so we have this two to five ratio here, and we did the same thing right there, right? A to two to five. All right, then we get into, again, I'll just keep using the pen, so I don't have to keep going back and forth. Okay, so then we have C. So the first thing we see for C is right here, is that, it, okay, so it has to be, what this means when we see that three right there, is that, and that's actually B, I'm sorry. So with B, we have A to B as a 5, and B to C as a 3. So what that means is that the number we're going to pick has to be a multiple of both 5 and 3. Okay, And so right now, we have B is equaling 5. right? But 5 is obviously a multiple of 5, but not 3. Okay, So then like our, we would kind of go through would be like, OK, well, what if we multiplied each A and B by 2? So what if A is 4 and we have b 10 
okay? A, we're not really concerned about, that's fine for A. For B, 10, still not a multiple of three, right? So, okay, that's not gonna work. So we'll get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay, what if, as you just kind of go down the list here, right, of, okay, so what if we multiplied um, that two to five ratio, right, for A to B? So what if we multiplied each of those by three? Right, so then we would have a is six, b is fifteen. Okay, and then we're happy, right? Because um, fifteen is a multiple of both five and three. Yes. Okay, so then we're okay here. So now we can start looking at c again. Okay, so b to c, so is it at a ratio of three to five, right? And so basically, when you're trying to figure that out, you're saying three to five equals 15 over what, right? So three times five is 15, five times five is 25. Okay, so that's what we have for C, 25. Okay, hopefully you guys are still with me here, right? As far as all of these ratios. So we have A to B and B to C working out uh, at the ratio that we want. Okay, now what about D? Okay, so now we have C to D is one to four. Okay, so that means the C is one and the D is four, right? So another way of saying that is D needs to be four times bigger than C, right? So C was 25, four times bigger. Whoops, get out of here. And so that means D is 100. Okay, so that's still, all the numbers still work out great. All right, and then we just got one more to figure out. And that is, what is E? Okay, so we have D is 100, and this right here just has the, that ratio reverse, right? So basically D is now four times bigger than E. So on this one, D was 100, right? So four times bigger, right? So we'll just divide it by four. And E will be 25. Okay, so we did it. And that's really the process. So when you first see one of these, it can be kind of crazy. But really, and then if we were going to add all these up, then we would go 25 plus 100 plus another 25 plus 15 plus 6. And that would be our answer, which is uh, 171. So that would be your final answer there. You do probably have to see a few of these to get used to it. There are many examples in our app. Um, <clears throat> and so that's really the best way is to go through, go through those practice problems um, and get used to it. And, and you'll be fine for these kind of questions on the test. We do have one more example to go over here. Okay, get rid of all this stuff. Okay, that's a pretty tricky ratio question though, right? But definitely the hardest of the uh, ratios, proportions, and rates type questions. Get rid of this thing. All right. What do we got for this last question? Okay, so I'll read it first, and then we'll kind of write it out together. Okay, so it says, last year there's a tennis club, and they order 150 boxes of tennis balls. The boxes arrived in 15 cases. This year they order 20 cases. How many boxes? Okay. So there are lots of versions of this type of question. Okay. So last so last year, 150 boxes, okay, in 15 cases. And they make it pretty obvious in the question that boxes are somehow inside of cases. So cases are bigger than boxes. Okay. So, and then this year we know 20 cases, boxes, question mark. Okay. So you could set up this as a proportion if you want to, but really I think the simpler way to do this is I, I just need to know how many boxes are in one case, 
right? And then we can multiply that by 20 to get our answer for this year, right? And so fairly straightforward, 150 divided by 15 equals 10, right? 10 boxes per case, okay? So now we know that there's 10 boxes in a case. This year we're having 20 cases. And 20 times 10 is 200, right? So 200 boxes total this year. Okay, and that's all you got to do, right? So um, that's really, there's lots of things where you have boxes and cases. Like you will see a question like this almost for sure. Uh, and the nature of it is just getting it down to how many boxes per case and then multiplying it by the number for this year and you're done. All right, that's ratios, proportions, and rates.